Mother Man. You're listening to Brutal Rewind, brought to you by your friends at Murder Metal Mayhem. We take a topic we've already covered, hog tie it, put a ball gag in its mouth, and throw it head first into a wood chipper. What comes out is our new twist on the subject. Brutal Rewind is exclusively brought to you by Shaker's Cigar Bar in Milwaukee, the most haunted bar in the United States. Book a ghost tour at Shaker's today at hangmantours.com. And now, here's your Brutal Rewind. All right, doing a little Brutal Rewind, number seven hey, here, guys. Over. Horns High Studios. What's up, motherfuckers? Little different format than the usual episode, if you haven't heard one of these before. But I got, of course, Joey and Chris here with me. What's Hell up, yeah. gentlemen? What's up? up? Doing a little overtime here, doing two episodes in one night. But, you know, we got this. We got this. Hell yeah, we're balling, son. <laughs> And we're doing Brutal Rewind number seven, but uh, we don't do these often. Man. Every two or three months, we bust one out when something new comes up on a topic we've already done before. So we don't do metal. We don't do mayhem. So we're just doing a Brutal Rewind on one subject, and that will be Ronald Butch DeFeo Jr. So Butch. He, he was the real life. His dad looked more like a Butch than him. You know, His dad was a tough motherfucker. Um, but anyway, uh, old Butch was a real life killer, uh, in the famous house on Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York. He was convicted of killing his parents, two brothers and two sisters with a shotgun on November 13th, 1974. The house they lived in would of course become famous as that haunted house in the Amityville horror and we covered that topic at a live event at the Dark History and Horror Conventions with our friends, Chris. Yes, and we did. The Black Crip. R- nice. R.I.P. Yeah, th- that was a great podcast. Of course, that's no more. But we know Tucker now does his own called Fright Fights. But uh, back back in 2019, when we did that, he was doing Black Crypt podcast. And that was a bonus that we did, an unnumbered episode in February of 2020. So go back and give that a listen if you missed it, that was a live one. That's kind of cool. And Chris, we found out that Ronnie DeFeo dies in prison in March uh, here, just this last March in 2021. But do you think his name is well known in the true crime world or just where that happened and the whole stories well, that I spawned? Would say probably certain people in the true crime world just because of how brutal it was. And then they made the movie after the Amityville horror movies afterwards. So that kind of like highlights it a little bit. I think so people right. are like, okay, this is based on something real. Right. So they going to go check it out. So, yeah, I think so too. I think so too. What do you think, Joey? I mean, I, in my opinion, I don't know this for sure at all, but I feel like if you asked a, you know, a portion of people from each sector, I feel like horror movie fanatics would know the DeFeo name more oh, than sure. the true crime right. fanatics. That's probably a good which point. Which is weird, but it's just because the Amityville was so impactful, and they did, like Chris said, want yeah. to find out the true story. Right. So I think horror guys would probably be able to have a better conversation with you about DeFeo off the top of the head. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Because like Chris said, they allude to it a lot. Yeah. Because that's the whole reason why they claim the place, the place is on it. Right? Exactly, yeah. So very interesting. Uh, huge thanks to our friends at Shaker's Cigar Bar Hell for yeah. sponsoring the Brutal Rewind shows. Uh, Shaker's is a great bar. Hell yeah, I saw they was painting the deck. I Fucking, did, did see you that. see all the pictures? I did. <laughs> video, too. Yeah, video, too. Fucking uh, right. So, yeah, Bob had the ladies up there paint the deck out in front so you could sit out on the deck up there in Milwaukee. Just such a great place. We've talked about it before. We've done shows from there. And Bob Weiss and the amazing staff at Shaker's are great. The food is amazing. The drinks are good. The atmosphere is amazing Huge there. selection of cigars. Yeah, cigars. Like, and then, of course, you could do the Dahmer walking tour. You could do the paranormal stuff. He's got seances and all sorts of cool uh, things in the paranormal line of things. And also, if you're into true crime, Joey, that's a cool spot for our boy Capone. Yeah, Al Capone. He was a uh, owner of that exact bar at right one time. in the 20s yeah easy and- yeah so it's just got it's a lot shit. of rich history there 
And so visit uh, ShakerCigarBar.com or book a tour at HangmanTours.com, and you definitely won't be sorry. We've had some listeners go up there and have an amazing time, so that's really cool. All right, well, since the Brutal Rewinds are short, we're going to get right down to it, gentlemen. Let's get to business, motherfucker. That's right. Uh, Not everyone knows the details of the actual murders, so I thought I'd just give a quick recap here. In 1974, um, as I mentioned before, Ronald DeFeo kills his parents and four siblings in a brutal, brutal fashion. His dad owned a big car lot in New York, and they had some money, uh, but Ronald was a fuck-up. Uh, he was a heroin addict. Uh, Get that dog food. <laughs> constantly fighting with his dad. Uh, claims his father was abusive toward him and the family. Of course, the father is not alive to defend himself, so we don't really know that. That's what Ronald DeFeo Jr. is claiming. And I mean, I'm uh, sure claimed. He, was, he was probably somewhat right about that. I'm sure the way he was raised was uh, like that. He might have elaborated a bit, but thank sure. Ronald DeFeo that. It's hard to tell is because he's fucking changed the story so many times. Right. And he's been inconsistent on things he said. So Right. And like you said, there's nobody else to collaborate <laughs> right. that side of it. <laughs> yeah, you so, go, can't talk to one of the other siblings. Uh, uh, they're all dead. Um, and there was also talk about his father possibly having a mob tie, go figure, with the Italian last Italians, name. Italians, bro. As an <laughs> Italian myself, that's just like, really? With the fucking Italians getting always lumped in oh, with the know, mafia. But We know you're mobbed up, bro. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm all too used to it, but I don't know if any of that's true. But it was definitely like a thing. Like, that was a theory of what they thought happened. Uh, we'll talk about it. But the story is that he went to a local bar there right by his house and told people there that his parents were shot so a group of people go back to the house with him including a friend of his and uh the friend winds up calling the police when they find the bodies um the police are of course concerned it was a mob hit and they were afraid that you know ronnie just happened to miss it you know and that they were going to come back for him so they wanted to put him in jail to get him the fuck away from that house we're putting you in jail to keep you safe right Right. to keep you alive (laughs) Uh, because, you know, they really thought. So apparently, you know, there could have been some mafiosa ties with that if the cops knew, but who it, knows, it, you know. You know what I just thought was weird, though, is like if you're going to do that, wouldn't you take a witness into a safe house and witness protection? You don't Not put in them in jail. a fucking, fucking jail, jail where they with kill, other people. So I feel like you put him in jail because there was probably already question if possibly he could be involved. Yeah. So that was a way just to apprehend a suspect. And not let him know. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying the only reason they put him there was because of the mob hit, but I think they really wanted to scoop him up and get him the hell out of there because of that and because they thought he was involved because he said he shot him, you know? Yeah. Like I said, if there was no murders involved, it was just the mob thing, I think they would have hit him away somewhere. Yeah. Because in jail, they could still get at him. Especially in prison. But maybe in jail, they could keep a tighter leash on him. Right. I don't know. But uh, Joey, I don't know if you think you know that it was a you know a shoe in that Ronald DeFeo Jr. did this, or do you think there was some truth to that whole mob style hit? hit? I, I don't really know if there was, if the mob hit was such a thing because uh, the way that they were killed wasn't um, in the way that the mob would do it. Okay, uh, it wasn't like a, a style that the mob's known for, I guess. Um, the, but it's also a convenient uh, cop out for him, I guess. Right. And I wouldn't be surprised being over there, you know, his dad being who he was and dealing with cars and stuff. He probably had, you know, at least some acquaintances with some of the mobs. Oh, I'm sure that yeah, probably yeah. in there. Somewhere. So I mean, that's probably in his mind. Yeah. He's like, man, how am I going to get away with this and make it look like you know anything happened? Oh, I could say blame the mob it on did them. It. Yeah, that's um, possible. But the 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 creepy thing about this whole. Uh, the the murders though that makes you wonder it makes you got to ask is because they said that all of these killings happened within 15 minutes right and they said that none of them heard it none of them heard it they were all neighbors heard gunshots right nobody in the house heard it uh, or apparently because nobody woke up and they were all found lying on their beds on their stomach with their stomach down all the same exact way so it's like man within 15 minutes you killed all these people you'd almost think there had to be a team on each person almost to or, shoot or at least somebody instantly. else you know something 
It, yeah. It's weird. It's a weird it is. situation. So, you know, the the fact that he brings he says that, it seems like an easy cop out. At the same time, it's a very it's very plausible. Yeah, and it's a I mean, otherwise he did a fucking immaculate job of fucking massacring a family like right. you know, like a fucking elite samurai basically. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, that's pretty that's a good point. That's a good point. Now I was living in the tri state area at the time in Connecticut. I would have been about uh, well, when the crimes happened, I was young. But when the book, I didn't hear anything about the crimes. But when the book came out about the haunted house was when I knew about it. Right. right. And I would have been, I don't know, maybe 12, 13-ish, somewhere around there. Um, we had just moved from the Bronx only a year before the, the murder happened. But like I said, this would have been a little later when the book came out. Um, we have family that lived throughout that area and this was such a big book then. And the movie of course was huge. And I remember it even as a kid, you know, I was scared to fucking death reading this book because I was a kid and right. it was pitched as a real story, <laughs> yeah, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, holy shit, like this really, this really happened, happened, you know? And so, you know, it was definitely a, a freaky thing and it really caught fire. I mean, that was just a huge, you know, inner, you know, just advertising blitz and they yeah, were on right. all these talk shows and it seemed like a real thing. Um, but, uh, but that's my memory of it. Now, Chris, have you ever read the book or I, I assume you saw the movie. I've seen the movie, but it's been like a ages long time. ago. Yeah. yeah me too. Time, but yeah, me too. What I, what I remember of it is good, but obviously I don't have much of pro- project or, I don't know. It's been a long fucking time. Yeah, no, I've never read right. the book though. Yeah, the book was really good, but again, now I, you know, it's a whole total hoax. It's been you know unveiled. Well, yeah, but like you said, you're yeah. a so kid. You're different. like impressionable. Like yeah, that. it was like the first like quote unquote scary yeah. book I've read. It freaked me out. Joey, what about the sequels? I mean, I know you're a big horror movie yeah. guy. I got all of them. Um, I'm a fan. I like the first movie as a scary movie. Uh, I liked the remake with Ryan Reynolds. I thought that was really good. The remake was good, yeah. But, like, if, if you're going to watch Amityville Horror, to me, you got to watch part two, The Possession. And that's the one that tells the story of the DeFeo family. Oh, okay. I'll have to check <laughs> that the out. Where the first one was more about the family that moved in after the right. homicide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then this one was actually about the DeFeo family. And it's, it's super cheesy and... It's just really good. It's a good 70s movie. Huh. It might have been early. I can't remember. But the time that it came out, it's like very fucking Yeah, I'll have to check that. it out because I have not seen any of the yeah, sequels. Yeah, no, I definitely, I always suggest that. I'm like, if you're going to talk Avaville Horror, and, and and that's hard for most people, you know, if you don't really know, you don't know. You're just like, right. this is the Amityville Horror. Right. But the fact that they came back and tried to actually tell the story that it was really based off of. Okay. That is really cool because you don't usually see that. Yeah. No, that's cool. So DeFeo was convicted of six counts of second degree murder a year later in November of 1975. He gets six 25-year-to-life sentences. Yep. Uh, he was at Sullivan Correctional Facility in Fallsburg, New York. I'm not sure if my dad dealt with him at all because my dad worked at uh, Bedford Hills, which is a female prison. But for a time, he worked at both that prison and a prison where they process you through like Joliet. Right, okay. So um, here, Joliet. So he may have had a... I didn't ask him about him. I should have, but I forgot when I talked to him last to see if he had any dealings with him. But I do know my dad went to a lot of the different prisons for different training, and I'm pretty sure he's been to Sullivan, but whether he had ever interacted with this fool, I don't know. Uh, But until his death a couple months ago, uh, he claimed he was innocent. So uh, Sullivan Correctional Facility is a pretty rough place, but he said he was... You know, uh, not guilty. And yeah, Chris, everybody in prison is right. innocent. Like, right? I'm innocent, bro. <laughs> uh, he always Cash de- was like, I said, no, I did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> he was denied parole uh, when he did go up before the board. He winds up dying at a hospital in Albany. And I did see that no cause of death has been formally announced yeah, yeah, as far as funny. I could tell. It's been a while. See, you think I'm they- surprised you we know don't. It was COVID. What's that? You know it it's going to be COVID. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right. right. Uh, we thought, you know, with his death uh, happening, we'd be a good one to read, you know, look yeah. at and talk about because 
as we mentioned, you get the true crime side of this story as well as the horror side with the movies yeah. and all that. I mean, we could really honestly do an episode about the actual case. Oh, yeah, yeah we real. could. Because it is that intriguing of a story. Yeah, it is. And this was, you know, a quick brush through it, but there's a, there's more to it. Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, the episode I mentioned earlier is the only second live episode we've ever done. I think that was the third one. First one was at Night Shop, right? The first one was at Night Shop, but it, well, we didn't do an episode, though. We oh, just no, talked we did, right, and we did right. some killer cage correct, match and stuff. Right. This was the second one that we did at Dark History Convention. We did episode 33 on Gacy, and then uh, we talked about his artwork and the whole murder billia thing, and then the year after that yeah, then was when we did, when the, we did the one horror, with Black yeah. Crypt. So, um, so we've done two live episodes, but three different appearances where we... We talked and stuff. So yeah, you're talking about the murder and uh, the Lutzes when they purchased the Amityville house, right? Yeah. They also purchased all the furniture in it for like four hundred dollars as part of the contract. Oh, nice! So and they, they sold it. I, I don't know what they did with it, but yeah, it's that like, would have been smart though. Yeah, it's like now you got this murdered family's shit. You yeah, know, yeah, that's it's a big right? story. So I, I don't know what they did with Man, it. Man, you could have but... got a fucking mint for that shit while that fever yeah. pitch was going oh, on. God. Like you could buy the dresser. From the master bedroom, people yeah, would have spent yeah, thousands yeah. for some probably just average furniture, nothing oh, yeah. special about it, you know. Just the fact that it was in that house and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, Chris, those are fun doing the live, you oh, know, yeah, episodes like that. Those. It's always yeah. a good time. It's a little different than the way we do them here, but it's fun. Well, the first, the, fir the first one we did, though, at the night shop, I was like, oh, man, I got to get in front of people and do this shit. I was a little <laughs> nervous only because of the crowd. I mean, it was like dinner theater crowd. And I'm <laughs> right? like, these people are going to lose their shit when we get up there. <laughs> and thankfully, Pete Saratovich and a few of the, the local metalheads showed up, and it made the place feel a lot more like our kind of crowd. Definitely. And I remember getting up there, and we sat down, and I was looking right, the, you know, with the stage lights on you, you can't see a lot of faces. That, yeah. Right. But the one face I could see was this woman that was probably about my age, maybe a little older, definitely not like the person you would expect that would find us funny. Right. And I remember looking at her face and she laughed and laughed. And I'm like, we're killing it because we're making her laugh. Like, yeah. I expect to make Pete laugh. You right, know what yeah, I mean? Like, that's what I'm going for. Right, you know, that's right. our kind of guy. But when you could make the person that doesn't normally dig it laugh, that's, that's awesome. when there's something there. And I know at low 12 shows every now and then I'd get somebody came up to me after the show and say, you know what? I don't usually listen to that kind of music. But I was here and I stayed. I really liked you guys. And I liked it because I could understand a lot of what you were right. saying, singing. Because with a lot of that kind of stuff, I can't, you know. And right. I get that, you know. Especially people that don't listen to like death metal yeah. growlers and stuff. And the grindcore stuff. I mean, yeah. if it's not your thing, most people, that's one of the things they don't like. Exactly, you know? yeah. So that was always a nice compliment to hear that, so. All right, well, thanks again to Bob's and Shaker Cigar Bar for sponsoring the Brutal Rewind shows. You go Back to shakercigarbar.com or book your own tour at hangmantours.com. Tell Bob we sent you up there, man. Fuck the yeah. last group of listeners from Toledo went up there and had a good time. Yep. Ladies, uh, you know, did some of the paranormal tours and the Dahmer tour and just a good time. So don't forget to check out MurderMetalMayhem.com to listen to our past episodes. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can support the show by joining our 666 six, Club. Six, six, three bucks a six. month. Three bucks a month. Patreon.com slash MurderMetalMayhem. Join now, and the links to all this stuff are in the episode description. So thanks again, guys, for checking out well, yeah, this Brutal you. Rewind. We'll see you next time. Mother, mother, man.